All right, so making a PLA is not as easy as it seems. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna go over some of my um, findings that I found out um, through my research uh, about how to make PLA uh, with this desktop extrusion line. Um, and so let's get right into it. First things first, uh, let's start with the extruder, uh, with the auger screw and everything here. Um, first thing here is the temperatures that I have for the mold. Uh, the mold heating is basically this unit here in the front uh, that molds out the, uh, the plastic there. The barrel heating is this area here um, where it heats up inside of the barrel and then the feed cooling area is where it basically feeds into from the hopper into the auger screw, so this area. So there's three zone heating here and I was playing around a lot with this temperature. Um, I spoke to my manufacturer, he was saying that, oh, you should uh, extrude this at 200 degrees uh, for the mold heating and 190 for the barrel. So I tried 200 and 190 and what I found out was that, that these temperatures were way too hot. Uh, basically, it was melting the PLA to where it was essentially coming out of the extruder uh, pretty much like liquid, so it was way too hot. Um, there is conductive heating that is generated from the screw inside as it moves the pellets forward. So that's where the majority of the heating actually comes from. And based on my research, you basically want to have uh, these temperatures set to the melting point of PLA. So 160, I believe, is the melting point of PLA. Uh, and that's what I have set for the barrel heating. And then for the mold, I have it set slightly above uh, the melting temperature of PLA, just to ensure that as it gets moved through the screw, if there's any PLA that's not uh, heated up and liquefied, um, that it, it will uh, get to that temp uh, because of the mold temp. Another thing is I've been playing a, a lot around with the speed setting here. Uh, previously I had it around 31 RPMs. I reduced this to 29 RPMs. Um, we'll get to why I did that in a second as we go down the line. Um, we have our hopper here. Um, I did show in a previous video that I did buy this cement mixer here. And this is what we use essentially to mix the PLA resin with the colorant. Um, so I'll do batches of this, uh, you know, once a week or once or twice a week, and then I'll fill them into these Home Depot uh, jo uh, gallon uh, buckets here. And then I'll just pour the buckets into the hopper as we need, if we need more resin. Um, so that's kind of that process. Uh, another addition to the line is, as you can see here, I've added a secondary water bath. Uh, this is kind of a ghetto setup, but uh, I just basically took one of these clear plastic bins. Um, you'll see that the plastic comes out of the extruder into this water bath, which is, a, this water bath is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And then this one, I don't have a temperature reading, but uh, it's basically much, much, much cooler. It's probably around uh, 65 ish maybe maybe 60 degrees Fahrenheit um, it's very it's very cool um, so we have uh, extended the water bath to, to and I added this unit to the to the water bath um, roller nothing new here and pretty much that's about it that I did to the extrusion line uh, basically just playing with the temperature of the extru uh, the extrusion line and also adding a secondary water bath Another thing that we're, we're going to be doing is as they come off the rolls here, uh, we will be dehydrating these for at least 12 hours, um, basically overnight, 8 to 12 hours into our dehydrator down here. Uh, we'll be using 105 degrees Fahrenheit for 8 hours. We already have one roll in here. So basically at the end of the day, either myself or Evan, uh, we'll just put the rolls in here, let it dehydrate overnight. Uh, there's a crystallization period. Uh, for this PLA that um, I didn't know about previously. So I was kind of just taking this from the the line and kind of try, trying to print it on uh, the printers and that did not work very well. Um, other issues is uh, you can't, maybe you can, can or cannot see it here. I was getting sort of an oval shape out of the extrusion line, uh, which was causing issues with this feeding into the uh, um, the extruder and the hot end, uh, especially on the A1 series. Another small thing, um, I was aiming for, for about 1.75 millimeters uh, for the diameter of the filament. I've now kind of tweaked it so that we're getting close to more of a 1.7 instead of 1.75. 
um, because I just found that 1.75 to 1.85 was kind of inconsistent and it wasn't feeding properly into the hot end of the uh, A1 printers. We've also been playing around with this little uh, dial here. Um, this actually increases the speed of this rolling mechanism that goes back and forth. So uh, the higher number that you go here, the faster that this will uh, roll back and forth. And so I've been playing around with this. It's currently at three. Um, you'll see that sometimes uh, it might go a little bit too fast and it'll just jump to the next line. And that might have been causing some inconsistent um, issues with the diameter of this as it was pulling, pulling through the winder. But now I think that we added the another cool water bath um, you're not gonna have that much of an issue because as it as it gets down to this line it's the PLA kind of is already hardened from the uh, the cool bath here so the jumping issue I think will be resolved from the uh, water bath the cool water bath cool one um, yep yeah. um, obviously with uh, the issues with tariffs the past couple of weeks with Trump and, and China. Um, you're, you're probably seeing a ton of increases in pricing. Uh, I know Bamboo Lab increased their price from their, for the PLA on their website. Uh, a lot of other brands that I buy from Sunlu and all of them have also increased their pricing. Um, this obviously is a very short term solution. Uh, it's not enough. I can't make enough plastic to actually supply uh, the entire print farm here behind me. So uh, it's just kind of using the colors um, getting color from a specific supplier, they only have like five different colors, so we're not going to be making a whole bunch of different colors. Um, it's just to make what we can and use it in the farm in a way where we don't have to constantly um, fix these printers because we, we are having a ton of issues on the A1s, uh, issues basically uh, filament not feeding properly, uh, clogs. Um, again, I don't know if I need to actually print this in a higher uh, temperature other than uh, 220, maybe 230 might be better for the homemade PLA. I'll have to play around with that. Uh, once we finish this new batch, um, that's what I'm going to do. Dehydrate it. I'm going to run it. To, uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to throw these on the printer and maybe try to use like 230 degrees on the extruder and see if that fixes any issues. Um, well, it's, I guess I should say it's more consistent with the, uh, with the printing. All right, uh, that's gonna do it. If you guys have any questions, comments, uh, anybody who knows more about this stuff than I do, uh, please, please feel free to chime in and let me know. Um, again, I think one of the biggest issues I was having was uh, the, the extrusion line was coming out an oval shape and not a, a perfect circle. Uh, on the filament and uh, that was causing inconsistent diameters as it was going into the hot end of the A1 where it, it wasn't feeding properly. So I would get it, we were getting a ton of issues um, saying that the uh, printer couldn't extrude the, the plastic. And so we would pull out, you know, maybe two to three feet of plastic, cut it and then refeed it in and, and sometimes it would feed okay, sometimes it would uh, have issues. So um, like I said, hopefully all of these improvements that we made to the line will solve that issue. Uh, we shall see and I will keep you guys posted.